This lesson looks at another crisis case study, that of Mexico in 1994, and it's also known as the tequila crisis. Mexico displayed lots of the vulnerabilities of a typical balance of payments crisis, and we're going to look at uh, different vulnerabilities that emerged within the economy, and to some extent made that crisis somewhat predictable for, for economists. Of course, hindsight is 2020, but if we look at it, we'll see that if most economists were, were, were looking at this economy carefully, then they would have predicted a, a crisis. So what caused the crisis in Mexico? As I said, it was a typical balance of payments crisis whereby there was an overvalued exchange rate, which typically leads to a large current account deficit. There was lots of short-term hot money inflows into the financial account in order to help balance that current account deficit. There was rising debt, either at the consumer, corporate, or, or government level. Reserves were flat or falling as more money started to leave the country than, en than was entering it. There's also a mismatch on the balance sheet that could be a currency mismatch or maturity mismatch in terms of the, the duration of the debt. Um, there was also the erosion of policy credibility or poor regulation, for example. There was a lot of political risk emerging in, in Mexico. Uh, and the last point was some form of panic or shock. So, in terms of the exchange rate, Mexico had an overvalued exchange rate. So, although the nominal exchange rate was weak, in real terms, the peso was overvalued. And this is because inflation was quite high, and inflation typically makes your, um, your, your currency overvalued because uh, the goods in your country become more expensive relative to imported goods. So for example, if a Big Mac is $1 in Mexico and it's $1 in the US, if inflation is 20% in Mexico, then the next year it's, it's the Big Mac's going to cost $120, whereas if inflation is only 5% in the US, it's going to cost $1.05. So in real terms, there was an overvalued uh, a currency. And this led to a loss of competitiveness. But this also led to a large current account deficit. So the current account deficit was 6.5% of GDP in, in 1994, and this was largely driven by a huge trade deficit of about $20 billion. So as the currency appreciated, exports became less competitive, but at the same time, it became cheaper for Mexicans to buy products from abroad, which meant their imports rose while their exports fell, and this led to a current account deficit. At the same time, that current account deficit was financed by a lot of hot money inflows. Now there are two ways you can finance your current account deficit, either foreign direct investment in, into kind of manufacturing facilities and long-term investment or short-term hot money flows which can come in and out of the, uh, the country very quickly. Now Mexico had the hot money flows which made it more vulnerable to a crisis. During the period from 1990 to 1993, uh, capital, foreign capital was pro predominantly in the form of portfolio investments. The problem is, as financial markets' perception of Mexico changed, as investors started becoming more worried, they started to take their money out. And this made the, the current account, um, well, the current account was already in deficit, but that made the financial account also turn to deficit. Um, because there was a lot, um, I guess, uh, an overvalued exchange rate and lots of consumption and a current de uh, deficit, uh, there started to be a rise in debt. Although debt for the government wasn't very high uh, compared to other countries. So in 1994, debt to GDP was only about 22.8, uh, about 23%. The problem is that the country's stock of dollar-denominated bonds increased. So Mexicans started borrowing in foreign currency. And that rose from about 6% in early 94 to about 50% by the end. So there was a very high rise in, um, in dollar-denominated borrowing. At the same time, reserves started to fall. Why? Because investors, so you had the current account deficit. And because investors were no longer putting their money in Mexico, they were taking it out. That meant that the fi financial account was also in deficit. So both your current account and your financial account were in deficit. And that meant that reserves started to fall as you started depleting your reserves. And investors started taking their money out because of political and economic concerns. So reserves fell from about $30 billion at the beginning of 1994 to about 17 billion by the end of November and 6 billion by December. So the problem was that as the economic fundamentals started deteriorating more and more, investors took more and more money out of, their, out of the economy and it drained the country's reserves.
The problem was that there was a mismatch on the balance sheet as well. So the Mexican government created a lot of, or borrowed in dollar in dollar denominated in dollar denominated bonds. So that created a currency mismatch because the government earned all of its revenues in pesos, but it had to pay all its debt back in dollars. So if the currency weakens, you need more pesos for every single dollar of debt. And by shifting the dollar uh, into dollar indexed bonds, you also created uh, a maturity mismatch at the same time, because the problem was. Mexico, by the end of 1994, only had six billion in reserves, but it had about 29 billions in dollar denominated bonds. So not only did I have a currency mismatch, but because it only had six billion dollars of reserves and it had about 30 billion dollars in bonds which were coming due in, in the following year, there was also a maturity mismatch. It didn't have enough short-term reserves to pay that short-term debt coming due. So it's actually a double whammy in terms of the, the, the mismatch on the balance sheet. There was also a huge erosion of policy credibility. So there were quite a few political developments which started to scare investors. First of all, there was a uh, uprising, kind of a left-wing uprising in the Chiapas region. There were lots of high-profile kidnappings and political assassi assassinations. And this caused a lot of anxiety for investors. So what happened was lots of foreign investors started taking their money out, but lots of Mexican uh, Mexicans they started actually not wanting to hold pesos anymore because they were worried about the situation and they started say, moving their money to the United States, sending money abroad, buying assets in the US. And the last thing was a shock that um, Mexico's economy um, absorbed. So the first one was is a political shock and there was the assassination of the presidential candidate. Um, his name was uh, Colosio and that kind of shocked investors and the whole political system in Mexico and that uh, you know is always a serious concern when you have such poor uh, stability in, in terms of that regard but also at the same time the US was hiking interest rates and what that meant was that the interest rates in, in the US started to rise and that meant that um, the attractiveness of holding money in US dollars and in the United States rose relative to other countries so what happened was lots of investors were taking their money out of emerging markets and putting it back into the US and of course Mexico as an emerging market also suffered from this. So in conclusion Mexico displayed uh, you know the hallmark vulnerabilities of balanced payments crisis it had an overvalued exchange rate had large current account deficits these current account deficits were typically financed by hot money inflows which are very un unstable rather than FDI which is much more stable there was rising debt a government debt and corporate debt, particularly dollar denominated debt. Reserves started falling as investors took their money out. There was both a uh, deficit in the current account and the financial account, so reserves fell. There was a mismatch on the balance sheet, so not only was there a currency mismatch, but there was also a maturity mismatch because they had so much debt coming due, but they only had very little reserves, and all, most of that debt was in dollars. There was erosion of policy credibility given the uprising in Chiapas, the political risk, the assassination of the presidential candidate. candidate. And at the same time, there was a form of panic or, or shock uh, in the sense of the political assassination, but also higher interest rates in the United States.